We are a nation of immigrants. Immigration is relevant to this year's theme, Exploration, Encounter, and Exchange in History, because new immigrants coming to America must cross the border, which means exploring new places as they encounter new people and ideas, which results in a cultural exchange as well assimilating into a new life. Yeah. A journey is, in, in my mind, it's, it's not something that has a, a, an exact beginning and an exact end. Individual states threaten to refuse refugees from Middle Eastern war-torn countries and suggest building walls to prevent immigration from Central America, South America, and Mexico. But individual states do not have the authority to decide who may be admitted and under what conditions. I'm still on the journey. Only Congress has the power to regulate all border crossings. The Supreme Court ruled that the power of the U.S. to exclude aliens from its territory is not open to controversy. Why do they come? The expectation of, of that I had, and probably what most people have when they decide to come to live in this country, is, is this is the, uh, the country of the milk and honey and and everybody is, is uh, wealthy and uh, live a happy life. And when I have a job, I will be have a money. Mm -hmm. And if I have a money, I have a job, I, I will be have a home, cars. One third of Americans can trace their families back to an Ellis Island relative. Who has not seen the photographs of those early immigrants arriving to the New York Harbor through Ellis Island, or the images of refugees seeing the Statue of Liberty for the first time with its inspiring inscription of, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. Congress began to regulate immigration with the passage of the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, which banned convicts, lunatics, paupers, and those likely to become public charges. Other undesirables were added in 1885, 1903, and 1917. But immigrants continued to come, so Congress began to limit the number of immigrants through the Immigration Acts of 1921 and 1924. The National Origins Act of 1929 assigned each country in Europe a quota of 150,000 migrants. In 1952, Congress opened the quota system to every country outside the Western Hemisphere. In 1965, the country-based quota system was ended, giving preference to relatives of American citizens. My name is Heidi, Heidi Aguilo, and I'm from the Philippines. I'm, I came here to America as a registered nurse. and. Uh, we started the life right there. And I'm the better half. My name is Frederick Aguilo. I came here as a software engineer. In 1988, it's what you call computer program. Immigration Act of 1990 increased the number of immigrants permitted to enter from 500,000 to 700,000. On November 20th, 2014, the president announced a series of executive actions to crack down on illegal immigrants at the border. There is much controversy and dispute with Congress over his actions. How did you become a citizen? See, it was uh, five years and um, I had to demonstrate a, a basic skill in, in uh, the English language uh, about the political system and uh, it basically you apply and, and do the process. I arrived in the United States with a, a temporary resident status. Uh, after two years, I applied to, uh, to have a, a status of permanent resident. And, uh, and that is what people call a green card. You do not have to become a, a citizen of the United States. But I did want to become a citizen. And after five years, I again applied uh, at the naturalization and immigration office uh, for citizenship. The only process it was, aside from the paperwork, was uh, there was a little booklet that I had to study. Uh, and I believe I had to have uh, uh, two witnesses who would uh, vouch for my character. For my project, I focused on the real-life experiences of legal and local immigrant families residing in central Pennsylvania. In A Nation of Immigrants, Susan Martin praised the early Pennsylvania immigration model for its unity, cultural diversity, and equal rights. 
Pennsylvania became the most diverse colony for religious tolerance, diversity of languages, and cultures. To this day, Pennsylvania's current governor, Tom Wolfe, stated, Pennsylvania will not seek to stop efforts to resettle refugees from crises throughout the world. He said that he wants Pennsylvania to remain true to its long noble tradition of being a welcoming place. Of the 13 million residents of Pennsylvania in 2012, 6.3% are foreign-born. To qualify as a refugee, a person must meet the definition from Section 101A of the Immigration and Nationality Act. It states that one qualifies if they are unable to live in their country due to persecution on account of race, religion, nationality, or are members of a controversial group. What risks do they experience as they leave behind a birth country to explore and settle somewhere completely new? It's a lot of risk. Everything is a risk. First of all, you're going to leave your whole family, go to a place where you don't know anybody other than your only sword is your profession. We chose Yugoslavia to go to because uh, the border between Yugoslavia and Italy was probably one of the easier ones to cross illegally. Once we were in Yugoslavia, then uh, through the woods we, uh, we escaped on foot uh, into Italy. Once we entered Italy, uh, we went to the police and uh, uh, to start the, the whole process of immigration. My mother and I spent four months in a, a camp where they would uh, uh, check your, your background uh, with, uh, with the uh, inner pole and uh, uh, process your request to immigrate to the United States. Once that was completed, uh, we flew to New York City and uh, we were sponsored by a uh, uh, religious organization. Over the years, Americans have responded to immigrants with attitudes of welcoming openness or those of hostility and suspicion. How have they successfully exchanged their former culture and skills to create a new life in America? But I said, you know what? You want to go to America? Go for it. Let's go. Change your profession. So you went to school. Quick. Fast. And we'll meet them in America. That's what we did. So it is a land of opportunity. The freedom that we enjoy here in America, from the outside, we thought that everything is free. It's like it's given to you. No. no. I did the freedom, in our opinion, as we are to like 27 years already, it's just the, your freedom to, to determine whether you work hard or, or not. not. You take advantage of the opportunity. Opportunities yeah. is very important. I have two kids. I want them well educated and I want them to face the challenges of America. I have a job and uh, working here 20 years, same place. My boss is, is very glad, two daughters working, one daughter working in New York, another daughter in Washington, D.C. My uh, <coughs> older son working in uh, social security, mm -hmm. another son working in a company in maintenance, and third, third and fourth sons are studying right now in uh, College. Uh, my older son it's was in, was in the military, uh, going in his Iraq. God bless him. Well, I, I went into um, uh, computer science. As I said, uh, in the rest of the world uh, still thinks that America is the land of opportunity, and rightfully so. Um, what they don't really know about is uh, with the opportunities comes, uh, uh, it requires uh, your participations as well in terms of hard work and labor and uh, uh, persistence and uh, patience. As they explored and settled, they encountered a new way of life and exchanged their culture and skills to become productive citizens. It is only through personal contact and growing respect that citizens learn to appreciate the varied contributions immigrants have made to American society. Oh.